I met them when I was teaching at an all-boys Catholic high school in South Philadelphia. They were a multi-generational Italian-American family. And shortly after I got to know them, and they got to know me, they said to me one evening, Father, you come to our house any time of the day or night. Someone will always be home, there'll always be a chair at the table, and we'll always be happy to feed you. And they meant it. No matter what time I stopped by at their house, I was always welcomed by some member of the family, and no matter what time it was, they seated me at the kitchen table, and then food started to appear, and it kept appearing, and we would start eating, and we would talk, and we would eat, and talk and eat some more. The Italians say that food is love. Well, in this particular household in South Philly, there was a lot of food, which meant that there was a lot of love. I once asked them, after several months, where they had learned such a beautiful, authentic style of hospitality. And the grandmother of the family, the matriarch of this whole group, she was sitting at the head of the table, and, and at first she was quiet, and then she started to say something, but she stopped. And I looked, and I could see, her that, see that she had a tear in her eye. Finally, after a little while, she said to me, Father, we learned hospitality from our parents. We learned all of this from our parents. She told me how her mother and father had come over from Italy. Once they landed in America and got settled, they had seven children. Mother stayed home. Dad worked at a local factory. They had very little money. But what they had was a lot of love and a lot of faith. The grandmother, who was sitting at the table with me, telling me this story, well, she described how when she was a little gro girl growing up in this family, the family never knew how many people her father would bring home at dinner time from the factory. He would look around and see people who were hungry, people who were lonely, people freshly arrived off the boat from Italy, and he'd bring them home for supper. But what she and her six siblings also saw was this. No matter how many people sat down to dinner on a nightly basis, there always seemed to be enough for everyone. Even though this family struggled to make ends meet, even though there was often very little food on the shelves, somehow when they sat down to dinner, even with dad's extra friends from the factory, there always seemed to be enough. The grandmother, telling me this story, started to cry again. And she said, I once asked my mother, how is it that we always seem to have enough? And her mother answered, Oh dear, it's simple. God always provides. God always provides. There was always enough in this family. Somehow, the pot on the stove never went empty. Somehow, everybody ate. Maybe not quite as much as they could have eaten, but everybody ate. God always provides. And this family in South Philly continued to live according to that example that they had learned years before. They trusted that God continues to provide. They always made room at the table. There was always food to be shared. That was an important lesson I learned from an Italian family. It is, in a real sense, the same important lesson that we learn from a Spanish saint. 
This week, on May 15th, we celebrate the feast of St. Isidore. He's also called St. Isidore the Farmer. In fact, his wife is also popularly venerated as a saint. Her name is St. Maria de la Cabeza. That's right. This week, we celebrate a married couple, a couple venerated as saints for centuries. St. Isidore was born in the year 1080 near Madrid in Spain. His family had very little money, but they had strong faith, and they passed that faith on to their son, Isidore. Isidore was still a rather young boy when he went to work as a farmhand at the large farm of a wealthy man named Juan de Vergas. And Isidore worked on the farm of Juan de Vergas for the rest of his life. As I mentioned, Isidore eventually married. He married a woman named Maria, and they ultimately had one son. So, like most parents, they knew the ups and the downs of parenthood. Their son was almost killed when he fell into a well at a young age. He was eventually saved, and his parents, Isidore and Maria, said it was a miracle that their son had survived. Well, their son did survive that time. But later, while he was still rather young, Isidore and Maria experienced perhaps the greatest human sadness. Their son died. Parents who experienced the sadness of burying a child. It was very hard back then, and it is very hard today. One of the things that helped them through their grief during that difficult time was their faith. Like every parent who loses a child, I'm sure that they were haunted by questions and gripped by sadness but they also knew that they needed the risen Lord if they were going to move forward with any kind of hope or healing. Isidore got into the habit of going to Mass each morning as he walked to the farm to begin his work for the day. Every once in a while, his fellow farm workers complained to the boss that Isidore had arrived late that morning because he was spending too much time in prayer at the local church. But when the boss investigated all of this, he always concluded that no matter what time Isidore arrived at work, he always seemed to get more work done than anybody else that day. Later generations suggested, suggested that uh, Isidore was receiving the supportive assistance of his guardian angel as he worked the fields. We might not be certain about that, but we are certain about a couple of things. First, we know that Isidore worked hard. There were long, long hours walking behind the horses, plowing the fields, long, back-breaking days. St. Isidore did not spend his life in a monastery praying. He went to work every day, and he worked hard every day. He knew what it felt like to come home exhausted, sore, achy, and sweaty. He and his wife knew what it felt like to work hard for a lifetime and to not have a lot of money, even though they were working hard. And while Isidore worked, we also know that he prayed. Not only did he talk to God when he went to Mass in the morning, Isidore talked to God as he walked behind the horses, holding the plow. He talked to God while he planted crops and harvested produce. You see, Isidore learned something that many of us forget. Isidore learned that his daily work could become the place where he encountered Christ. True, he encountered Christ in the Gospels and in the Eucharist, 
each morning when he went to church. But the Eucharist taught him to see Christ everywhere. If Christ is present in bread and wine on the altar, then Isidore learned to look for Christ in the field where the wheat was growing, in the vineyard where the grapes ripened. Isidore realized that Jesus, who learned a trade from his own father, was present in the daily work that he did, present in the daily work that you do, present in the daily work that I do. Isidore spoke to God as he plowed and planted and harvested ordinary work that became extraordinary because Isidore was speaking to Christ and listening to Christ right there. I wonder if we understand this in our own lives. Our daily work is part of God's plan for our lives. Our ordinary tasks, our daily labors, are part of what gives us dignity as God's children. St. Benedict told his monks and nuns that they would find God in two things. In Latin, he said, you will find God in ora et labora, prayer and work. What would happen if we remembered this lesson from St. Benedict? What would happen if we learned the lesson taught to us by St. Isidore in Spain? After all, most of us are busy people, hardworking people. We have tasks to do each day. What if we were to follow Isidore's example? Perhaps we could go to Mass in the morning, or at least spend some time each morning in prayer, reading the scriptures, thanking God for the gift of today. And then, as you start your daily work, talk to God. Talk with God. Listen to God. Think of it this way. You have a little prayer time in the morning, you eat your Cheerios, and now you have your to-do list. And you look at it, and the first thing on your list is vacuum the living room carpet. Well, what would happen if, as you got the vacuum out, you said this prayer? Lord, I'm about to vacuum the carpets. Thank you for the fact that I have somewhere to live. And thank you for the fact that I'm healthy enough to push this vacuum around this room. Or, in another context, what if you said this prayer? Lord, I am about to answer 23 emails. Thank you for the fact that I have a job and help me to answer these emails the way you want them answered. Or maybe you would pray, Lord, I'm about to teach a class. Lord, I'm about to see a patient. Lord, I'm about to have a meeting. Lord, I'm about to make a sales call. Thank you for my daily work and help me to recognize you in every person I encounter today. What if we prayed, Lord, I'm about to make dinner. Lord, I'm about to help my elderly parents. Lord, my children or grandchildren need some help with their homework. Thank you for giving me the chance to serve you by serving my neighbor. You see, if we approach life the way that Isidore and Maria did, our work becomes prayer, and our prayer energizes our work. There's one more aspect of the life of Isidore and Maria that I want to mention today. Isidore and Maria grew up in families who had very little money, but they had great faith. Like that family in South Philadelphia I mentioned earlier, this Spanish family believed that God would always provide. They believed that with God's help, there would always be enough. 
Over the centuries, two stories have emerged to show how this worked in the life of St. Isidore and his wife, St. Maria. Story number one. Uh, one day, Isidore was carrying a heavy bag of grain on his shoulders. Carrying this bag of grain, well, the grain belonged to the man who owned the farm. And Isidore had been sent by the owner with that bag of grain to take the grain to be milled into flour. All of this was happening in the winter. The ground was frozen. A dusting of snow had covered the earth. As I said, he was carrying that heavy sack of grain to be milled into flour. And as he walked towards the mill, Isidore saw some wood pigeons vainly scratching through the snow and the frozen dirt, looking for something to eat. But those poor little birds found nothing. And Isidore took pity on the birds. According to the legend, he opened his sack of grain that was on his shoulders and spread half of it on the ground for the birds to eat. And passers-by told Isidore that he was crazy and warned him that the man who owned the farm, that is, the man who earned, owned the grain, would not be happy when he found out that Isidore had used half of it to feed the birds. But according to the legend... When Isidore eventually got to the mill and opened the bag, he found that it was completely full again. And not only that, when they ground that one sack of grain, it produced an amount of flour that you would usually expect from three sacks of grain. God always provides. At times, God provides more than enough. A second legendary story. Isidore had a habit of inviting people to dinner at his house without first telling his wife. As he walked home from the farm where he worked, if he saw somebody who was hungry or poor or lonely, he would invite them to his house for dinner. And after a while, his wife learned to always have a pot of stew on the stove to feed whomever it was that Isidore would bring home that night. And no matter how many people he brought home, it seemed that the pot never went empty. There was always enough. God provides. Now, some people would read these legendary stories and dismiss them as medieval fictions or nice, pious legends. Maybe so. But in South Philadelphia, I met a family who had a very similar and very real experience. They understood, that Italian family I knew in South Philly, they understood that God had given them everything they had, and they also understood that in faith they were called to share. They were called to be generous. They were called to be hospitable. Again and again in the Bible, we are told that if we give, we will receive back from the Lord, and that the Lord will give back to us in abundance. Some people actually trust. They trust the Lord enough to give it a try. Maybe Isidore and Maria learned to trust the Lord. Maybe they learned to trust because they spoke with God and listened to God throughout the hard work of every day. Did their lives go easily and smoothly and perfectly? Not at all. They, like all of us, faced hardships and hard work and heartbreak. Like every married couple, they had days when they disagreed. And when they were raising their child, he caused them worries. And then they buried their child. 
The life of St. Isidore and St. Maria is not a life of smooth sailing and easy perfection. But they did live lives of deep faith, constant generosity, and prayer. A thousand years later, St. Isidore is known as the patron saint of farmers, day laborers, and bricklayers. Isidore and Maria serve as an example for married couples and people who have to work hard to earn their daily bread. May their example always inspire us to create a seat at the table of our lives. May they teach us to share what we have in the name of Jesus, trusting that the pot will never get empty and our hearts will always be full.